Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Future Friday, we're going to talk about future of small scale wind energy. That is a very critical aspect here. So what is the issue right now? Well, issue is that wind energy works. It's a fundamentally uh, good option for renewable energy. There are only three things that are this ca uh, capable. A, solar, B, uh, hydro and C is the wind system so it does work there is no two way around it it's not a hoax it's not a just like you know uh, you know pie in the sky dream it works only problem is you need grid scale to work aka megawatts to hundreds of megawatt like uh, to give you a context of that like some of uh, right now like modern most deployed uh, wind farms are easily exceeding 8 megawatts and some are uh, like made by Siemens and that can go upwards of 15 megawatt in one turbine so let that sink in this puppy works but it requires huge scale now consequence of that that it requires huge scale it requires huge capital now that is one thing you have to understand it does not matter how good your goddamn product is if nobody can afford it it's like uh, people have to take out loans to build this sort of thing but like the moment you're gonna go to a bank it's like yeah i need 700 million dollars they're like uh, no thank you so that's one thing you have to understand so uh, barring unless uh, very rich nations most come places countries corporations uh, even nations do not want to touch this because the capital investment required is too goddamn high then we come to another aspect which is like the maintenance is very uh, expensive on these things and you have to shut them like there is like on average they are like you know you have to do maintenance uh, two three times a year let's just go for the sake of argument assume we want to do it four times a year just to be safe uh, but uh, the basically the smaller your wind turbine would be maintenance per mega would be higher that's why people want to make them as huge as possible not only it makes them efficient it also uh, basically reduces per megawatt cost of uh, maintenance so people want to make them as huge as possible consequent makes the capital investment idiotically high so what uh, why do we need a small scale that scale does work yes it's not accessible uh, accessible to everybody but it does work now one thing you have to understand uh, like right now grid scale battery banks are uh, you know a dream that n it does not exist there are some pumped hydro that does have one gigawatt hour capacity two gigawatt hour capacity but they are few uh, far and few between it's not something that's like oh go there then you have like you know 5000 megawatt uh, uh, gigawatt hour kind of battery we don't have that kind of scale yet it's like megawatt is nothing for grid scale you need gigawatts and multiple of that like best case scenario is like five or six uh, gigawatt hour so right now we are not there yet however when you are talking about home scale we could have done that like you know few years ago and people have been doing this for long enough where you have a uh, like say uh, lead acid battery systems which have been working for 25 years now you're like wait a minute isn't lead acid battery have very short lifespan yes if the plates are very thin like uh, normal general purpose batteries they are they are meant to be like you know disposable but when you're talking about like a uh, big chunk of cell ones where you actually buy single cells and you have to arrange them depending on your voltage requirement those can come up with warranty of uh, around 25 years so and like this is how your railway communication systems and uh, mobile towers they used to work uh, railway i'm pretty sure they are still utilizing this i cannot talk about mobile towers so if you want to uh, like basically take care of your home as a like you know like i have a house i want to make sure the intermittency of uh, basically wind energy can be taken care of battery bank is like we got the technology and uh, this was big clunky and uh, kind of expensive uh, the modern lithium ion system is like more than cheap enough like it's like we got to a point where it's like people can afford it so is there and then one thing we want to do is like basically solve the problem at the source it's like you made an awesome power plant who are you selling the electricity to you are selling it to the customer customer generally a household uh, person so why not directly generate the energy right there it reduces the whole complexity of the grid it makes it everything simple so you know you know solve the problem right at the source for that you must have small capital cost that's the sole reason why solar is gaining uh, momentum so rapidly simply because the cost of solar finally crossed the threshold where common people i'm not talking about like you know uber rich people i'm talking about common people can at least dream of it it's like if you can afford a car you can get a rooftop solar at this point in time and i can guarantee you that in india most places and heck if you are living in bangalore you have to do solar otherwise like you're gonna go bankrupt with the electricity bill because the kilowatt hour package cost is too goddamn high so uh, all these things considered it there is a huge uh, what you call uh, demand in marketplace where it's like what if you can give wind because it works 24 into 7 and again you might be like okay it's not uh, one kilowatt hour it's like you know it's giving you one kilowatt guaranteed 24 hours but it does give you something and uh, let's say you uh, pile this up with uh, some sort of solar system it gives you even more redundancy it's like let's say solar is like you know for a fact that uh, even on worst day i'm gonna get this much power but how much power do you get at night that is zero and any number is bigger than 
than zero. So wind energy, even if let's say it's only three kilowatt or four kilowatt, that's more than good enough for your night loads. So that's why there is a serious need for small scale systems. Now, uh, one thing that has recently got a lot of attention is that bladeless turbine. Basically, it's a giant stick. It does look like a phallic symbol, but do not ask me why. It's just a stick that's waving in the wind. That's all it's doing. Like you look at the video, it's like, is it broken or something? No, that's how it's supposed to work. So what this puppy is doing is what we call, uh, there is no spinning parts in this. There is nothing, no rotational, and there is no complexity. Inherently, the whole design is just a shaft. I'm not joking, that's what they call it. Uh, it's just a shaft, that's it. So the idea with this is they are utilizing what we call vortex shedding. So basically, if you have a cylindrical object, if wind flows through it, wind will impart some motion onto it. Now, if things are just right, or in case of architecture, just wrong, uh, that in motion that is imparted will end up resonating with the structure and then there will be a feedback loop. So if your wind speed is, let's say, 20 km per hour and it starts to sway, it will keep going again and again and again and until the architecture breaks. Like bridges have fallen apart because of that. Chimneys have fallen apart. If you see a modern chimney and you see a spiral groove around it, not a groove, I think like a, you will see something spiral around it. That's primarily done to uh, break uh, what we call vortex shedding. So it's a known thing. It does work. It has enough oomph into it to, to destroy bridges. So we know for a fact that it's powerful force. So. Uh, doing the math, if you create a scenario where you have a shaft that is, uh, you know, tuned enough to resonantly match, uh, basically vibrate properly, uh, you know, in a feedback loop, you can extract a lot of wind energy out of it. So, uh, now what you are getting is just a vibration. Now, vibrations to converting into electricity is kind of a difficult thing to do. However, because of the frequency, basically, you know, what kind of hertz that we are talking about, it is kind of doable uh, even on a small travel, uh, utilizing permanent magnet and, uh, you know, basically coils, basically normal generator, it will work. Although I do not expect the frequency output uh, would it's like you know line level it would be like you know very high frequency 300 hertz or 200 hertz or something like that but it does work now everything about this point uh, it works it's, it's a single shaft however uh, there are a lot of people who call this puppy into question simply because this has been going on for around 10 years at this point in time and the uh, people behind this uh, kickstarter uh, they started a kickstarter which they were very honest about it's like dude this is for uh, uh, marketing because if there are people willing to put money on the marketing side of things uh, you can go show this to like you know people with deep pockets like you know if people are that excited about a freaking advertisement uh, you know there is some uh, room to grow so they got a lot of money from government grants and uh, private funds and all that like they have deep enough pocket and their aim was like you know we're gonna start make a prototype then we're gonna make a hundred watt then we're gonna make a kilowatt then make a watt sounds good they should have done this years ago at this point in time like in 2017 they should have had 100 watt which they did build but only one and so far i have not found any place where i can say like this is the turbine this is the wind speed and this is the voltage uh, ampere and like you know sine wave whatever like they are giving and all they have is an indoor testing of like a one few lightable uh light bulb i'm saying basically led flickering and the flicker is too uh rapid so because of the rapid flickering i think the voltage might be high enough but i don't think the amplitude is stable enough where it's like they're using some sort of boots okay so uh, there are some doubts and many physicists have also looked into it yes it does work everything about this works it's just that the amount of energy that you are extracting out of it that's not that's not so basically this puppy best case scenario is like few watts do not expect this to actually give 100 watts of power out of it so that's the one thing so that is the reason why i'm gonna claim this puppy has like only five percent chance of working now again i could be proven wrong because like again they did got millions of dollars or maybe the reason why they are not showing you the rms output of this puppy is because let's say the generator might be patented because it's working like this and then there comes the another aspect because it's vibrating like this there is no metal known to man no um, you know nothing is known to man that can keep vibrating like that uh, while staying stiff enough because you have to understand you you do not want to you know lose energy in flexuring of the rod the rod has to be as stiff as possible and you cannot do like this again and again i'm like i do not see any material able to last long enough like maybe you are two year i do not expect like 25 year lifespan so this is one thing that's why I'm like, I'm putting the probability of success very low. Then we come to another thing that became like a runaway hype uh, solid state system. Now the idea with this is there is no moving part, flat out, it's almost as close to like, it's inherently like a solar cell. So what does it do is basically you put a seed charge into it. Basically you dump energy into the system and you create neutral ions. Basically you have emitters and you have uh, attractors. Now when you create a emitters, emitters emit system. Now that creates a quote, quote unquote all you created is ion wind generator. Basically, uh, basically ion aircraft same thing you did it here. However, if you have a large enough surface area and you created a scenario where you let's say have potential difference of let's say five volts, uh, but if wind flows through 
it wind will take away basically a lot of ions that have charged particles but that creates a void in the system it's like you know you dumped five volts of potential difference energy wants to equalize and you draw something away that created a potential that you can extract so the system is that you will do input power so be mindful this is not a passive system you have to dump energy into it and by uh, all the studies that i could understand about this you are talking about very high voltage so you have to dump energy into this but when wind blows it away winds creates a scenario of uh, unbalanced scenario that unbalance draws uh, energy out of it so basically you end up in a scenario where you can get uh, voltage out of it it's literally like solar cell where you have like you know uh, crystals basically and uh, photons creates an unbalanced scenario where electrons are like you know in an unstable state then you connect a load to balance it out so same thing is happening here you putting a seed charge there and that ions are like you know ions wants to go from here to here that's all they want to do but wind is like no so wind is causing a loss here so that loss is creating a bit of a drain in a system where it's like oh now you have a potential voltage that you can extract to run your equipment and uh, scientists already are working on this puppy they actually built a system i do hate them that they could not find a way to properly upload one good image on this like i'm pretty sure somebody will be like okay this reddit thread has that but i failed to find it so uh, and these images are directly from the pdf uh, yeah the pdf they built on this puppy so it does work everything about this does work it is solid state there is no moving but unless you talk about the structure you may want to have the structure collapse in case of uh, let's say tornado kind of class wind so okay uh, it does work and scientists uh, built this showed a demo of it and the college universities they put a lot of money into this and they are trying to build a 100 watt system now you may be like okay 100 watt does not sound too big here's the deal this puppy does work it does produce insanely small amount of power aka running a small led is a too big of a task so it does work absolutely does work but it is way too underpowered and even the like person who actually built the damn thing is like yeah i think people got a bit carried away with the system over solid state kind of wind system it does work it's just like idiotically underpowered however science is true here it's absolute it does work and there is some serious potential in this what if we can figure out like what is the optimum voltage uh, optimum voltage based on let's say wind speed based on uh, relative humidity uh, atmospheric composition like there are other variables that we can tune and maybe we reach a point where it's like let's say 20 30 percent efficient from wind velocity to actual uh, energy extraction that time it would be really good like even if it's not good enough to like let's say 30 percent of wind farms if it reaches 20 percent that's like people will like shut up and take my money because uh, you know maintenance is such a big deal and because it's a static thing nobody will have noise complaints so I will give it a 20% chance of working, but I will say keep your hopes low because like this is a kind of niche kind of technology. I do not see this replacing uh, most normal wind system. However, in some niche scenarios where like, you know, put it and forget it, uh, people may want to prefer this system, even though it will be low power than other systems. It, it is like, you know, it's like a right tool for the right job. So in some scenarios, you're like, you know, what? this serves me well. Then we come to another aspect, which I like, uh, that is power pod. Now, the idea with this puppy is that this huge thing which it does look like a, a wind turbine it's not a vertical axis wind turbine it does have a vertical axis wind turbine inside but the uh, thing you see the green thing you see is just a scoop so idea is that turbine is the expensive part the scoop is the cheap part again they did a uh, 3d printing to make this puppy the scoop you can i'm pre like, pretty sure this is not big enough and i'm pretty sure there are many chair manufacturers who can print this out like as in like a uh, injection mold it in like one go so the idea is wind will hit it and because of the scoop is like 360 degree around no matter which direction wind is coming from it's gonna scooped up now the scoop up is built in such a way it's like uh, uh, funneling the air uh, and creating a uh, high speed flow basically so think of this way like you have a water hose and the, how far water goes and then you choke the flow at the uh, throat point you can send the water much further so same thing is doing this whole geometry is built for that a take air from any direction and put it in one axis basically axis directly going upwards and then uh, increase its velocity and then they have a turbine now this turbine is specifically built for high speed air it's if you directly have uh, this uh, you know upstairs or any place uh, like you know open air it will not do anything simply because it's designed to work at high rpm and whenever you're talking about turbine blades or fan blades they have a specific uh, you know airflow it's like at this airflow i'm gg lower than this i will not work higher than this i will not work efficiently so same happens here also so this is fine-tuned for that kind of scenario where it's like a turbulent air does not matter because all the air are scooped up and set into one axial system so everything is stable from its point of view air uh, direction does not matter turbulence does not matter it's like as long as 
there is something I can extract work out of it. And because it's a spinning inside an enclosure, it is safe from many things like bird strikes, which is a very big thing for many people. And I'm pretty sure it will also have less uh, noise pollution issues also. And the turbine is very slim. The reason for that is like, uh, if you take a big ass turbine, I'm talking like 100 meter lo long kind of span. And if you extract like, watch what kind of energy you generate on this whole 100 watt, it won't be like, you know, okay, 10 watt here, 10 watt here, 10 watt here, 10 watt here. It will be like, you know, 90 watt here, and then rest is here. Like how our atmosphere is, uh, like, you know, most of the atmosphere is at the sea level. Like you go to 100 kilometers, like all, almost everything is gone. Like go to 30 kilometer, most of it's gone. So same thing, they are making a blade that is only fine tuned for that. So reducing the material cost, fine tuning the design, and they do make some grand claim, like, you know, it's 3x more powerful. I do not think that. I simply think it's like, because uh, they're collecting the large surface area of the scoops, which they are removing from the equation. And they're like, no, our tiny turbine is getting, no, your tiny turbine is only working because we have a giant uh, step up transformer for it. So it does work. Everything about this does work. And it does solve one serious issue. It's like, it is safe for common public. Common public do not like the things that like, you know, children could put their hand into or like some bird strikes would happen because uh, if you live in a city there are a lot lot of birds so having this system does work having the system like be immune from uh, snow and all that jazz really awesome and it does work and the target point is like around one kilowatt to five kilowatt they are not aiming for megawatts of power they're like small scale system so i do see this puppy working out a lot because it's not too complicated it does work every aspect of, like basically it's solving an issue that's actually there however be mindful it's still uh, they're supposed to come out at the end of 2021 uh, this is mid 2021 so let's see how they come but i will put like most amount of val uh, probability of success on this puppy power pod so this was my presentation on small scale upcoming wind technologies. Hopefully you have liked it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it and enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike. Press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.